Hi, welcome back to my channel. Um, it's been a while, that's because in June I had my AP exam, but I'm back and I'm probably gonna be uploading more in the summer anyways. Um, so this video is sort of the June and July of your junior year and what you should be doing then. The reason why I combined the two is because I uploaded kind of late, but then also um, these are kind of things that you can do for the entirety of your summer for college admissions. I highly recommend you guys to check out my May of junior year video just so you can see if you're completing those things and then come back here to see what you should do for the summer. So without further ado, here are some things that I think you guys should get done for summer of your junior year in preparation for college applications. So tip number one I have is to finalize and also decide things about your college list. Uh, what I mean by that is figuring out whether or not you're applying early decision, regular decision, early action. For those of you who don't know, there's like different cycles and deadlines based on your level of commitment and uh, the deadlines and stuff like that. So for early decision, early action is kind of what it means. Like you get your decision early, but that means you would have to apply earlier. And people get early decision and early action confused and they're not really sure what it is. I know I was confused, so I'm gonna explain it to you guys so early decision is when you are it's kind of like marriage in a way you're committing yourself to that school if you were to get accepted. So you're basically shooting your shot and then if it was successful, you are like contractually obligated to go to that school and you can't apply to any other. They have you sign a contract and everything and I hear that the only way to get out of it is if you cannot financially afford going to that school. So for those of you that have a dream school that you know you're gonna go to if you get in, I highly suggest early decision because there are many benefits to it. I kind of wish I did it, but but for early decision, the benefits include you just, you know what school you're going to in the fall. And it also does boost your chances because you're showing the college that they are your top choice and they're more likely to get you in. Showing that commitment really boosts your chances. Additionally, if you're applying early decision, you're just being compared to other people in early decision and it's like a smaller application pool. Um, I know that UPenn accepts like a lot of people from early decision and so does Cornell. I think this graph explains it way better. Um, this is from the class of 2024 so that's last year but I think the same principles apply in certain schools like UPenn, Cornell, uh, Duke the majority of their student body is already handpicked from early decision so that's why I said that if you really want to go into that school then doing early decision is probably your best bet I encourage you guys if there's like any early decision sort of situations you guys can go into and you love that school I would highly recommend it there's also something called early decision 2 which is the same thing as early decision it's just that the cycles later meaning that they accept applications at a later deadline and they reveal like whether or not you're in around like March it's a great alternative if you get rejected like early action early decision you can apply early decision 2 to another school uh, schools that offer ED2 I would think I remember Johns Hopkins NYU and Tufts which are all really great schools if you're interested in those schools and you really want to attend those schools I think early decision two is a way that you can go. On the other hand, we have something called early action. So basically early action is like early decision in a way, but it's not binding at all. And you just get your results earlier. A lot of public schools like um, in New York, if you guys are in New York, uh, the SUNYs offer early action and that's actually I applied early action to one of them because I just wanted to like secure my spot at an institution so that I would be going to college in the fall. Um, that's kind of the strategy I employ. When you're applying early anywhere, there are basically three potential results that you could have. The three options are getting accepted, rejected, and then something called getting deferred. Getting deferred means that they read your application and they do see some promise, but they're not ready to sort of tie the knot. Like I'm going back to my wedding analogy, but they're not ready to add you to the student body. So what they do is that they push your application to the regular decision pool. So that means your application gets reviewed twice and you can send any updates through the portal about what you've been up to to try to prove even further that you belong in that school. From what I heard from like the college admission community or like the forums and stuff is that early action isn't as beneficial as early decision. You could apply early action, I'm not trying to stop you or anything, but there's no boost in applying early for certain schools. Like in MIT's admission blog, uh, they had an article where they admitted that there is no boost. Uh, the acceptance rates are very similar between their early and their regular decision pool. Selective schools like Harvard and Princeton, they offer something called single choice early action and what that is is that 
they are allowing you to submit their application early, but you're not allowed to submit um, early applications to any other institution. And it just basically restricts you from applying to any other early action policies, such as like the one at MIT or the one at SUNY. So that's kind of why people don't recommend doing a uh, single choice early action because they restrict you from applying to other early programs. So I would recommend you taking the extra time and submitting it like December, like January 1st so that you have like October, November and December to uh, really prune and perfect your application. So overall, I think that early action, early decision, there are great tools that you could use, but there are some limitations on either like early decision that gives you that boost, but then also um, you can't apply to any other school so that you have to make sure that's your dream school and early action it gives you sort of that leeway but then also doesn't boost your chances and might restrict you from applying to other schools early. My second tip for rising seniors is to research and find opportunities for rising seniors. So in my organization where we post opportunities for high school students around the world there are these programs that we promote that are called fly-in programs. So fly-in programs are basically programs that some colleges offer that allow you to gain an insight in like the college life and the college academics and also college admissions. So basically fly in, meaning that they'll pay for you to go to their school and have a campus visit, a campus tour that's a little bit more personalized for you guys. I think a lot of them are targeted towards underrepresented minorities, but here's a pro tip. If you apply to fly in programs, very likely they'll give you a fee waiver for when you apply to their school. So what I did is I applied to different fly in programs and I got rejected, which kind of sucked. But as a result, I got a fee waiver so that I didn't have to pay like the $70, $90 to apply to that school. I highly recommend you guys take this time to sort of figure out the deadlines for these fly-in programs and other sort of mentoring programs that might be available in your community. A little promotion um, opportunities is collaborating with First Gen Support. First Gen Support is another organization that we're collaborating with and their mission is to provide first gen immigrant uh, college students with information and sort of resources on how to succeed in college. And we're collaborating to co-host this event. It's called the Finding Opportunities event. Um, if you guys are following, we already posted about it, but basically we're gonna have guest speakers and panelists and it's it's gonna be sort of like a half presentation, half Q&A panel where we'll present like methods on how to find opportunities, like even little secrets about how we find opportunities to post for you guys. We're having six guest speakers ranging from schools like Stanford, UPenn, and MIT. And we're really excited about this event and I'm inviting you guys to join so that you guys can attend, make connections, you can meet me because um, I'm one of the co-hosts. And yeah, I put a link down below in the description for you guys to sign up for that event. It's June 19th, which is this Saturday. Um, from 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern Time. So last but not least, my final tip is to remain productive and take advantage of the free time that you have now. So my tip to stay productive this summer is to just find something to do, basically. <laughs> Um, this is kind of a vague tip, but what I mean is that summer is such an awesome time because you're not expected to go to like school for like seven hours a day and you can actually spend that time volunteering, doing an internship, and even like studying for anything you want to study for. You can even study for SATs if you're cutting it close on submitting your SAT scores. And you could also study for future AP classes or IB classes or any like hard classes you're going to have senior year so that you have that head start. You could also take this time to work on your common app essay. I think I said before in the previous video, the prompts are the same so you can start brainstorming now. I think this is the time to do some work now so you don't have to do it later in the fall of your senior year. And this applies to any grade I think. I think uh, whether you're a freshman, a sophomore, or a junior, I think staying productive in the summer is a great tip for all of you guys. And staying productive doesn't mean just work. If you're burnt out from the past school year, I think you should take this summer to refresh and to really take the time to have like a mental health day or take the time like go on a little vacation, treat yourself. But staying productive to me means doing something that will help you in the future. So studying for a class in the future is going to help you in the future. Studying for the SATs will help you in the future. Working, volunteering gives you job experience, also gives you money if it's paid, and it helps you in the future. Starting your essays now will help you in the future. And taking care of yourself now will help you in the future. Those are all the tips I have today. I only had three tips today, but that's because I believe this summer you should work and you should also take care of yourself. This could apply to rising seniors, rising juniors juniors, rising sophomores even. Thank you guys so much for still subscribing and sticking with me even with my short little hiatus. I really appreciate all the support, all the comments, all the likes. I truly appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.
Bye-bye.